Welcome back to no fan of Skyrim. Alright then. Uh, I am Lord under Cinderella the Mad and I am going to take you on a magical adventure to Blackridge. I hope to get out of here by Sunday. But I'm uncertain of my ability to do so because this place is huge. Seriously. Who's there? I knew I heard something. And I just taunted someone. Great. This place might also need a torch. Who are you fighting? Oh, a spear. Right, this place is, without a doubt, quite beautifully designed. So yeah, the torch really takes away from the general aesthetic of the place. Who am I fighting? You can't hide from me. I know you're there. Break you down into little pieces. No, that doesn't work in this game. Oh, sad times. Why are you fighting, Serana? Um, what trouble are you stirring? That sort of trouble. Yeah, this is kind of like the. What was it? Soul Care all over again? Because the area is just so vast, extensive. Which is why I would have thought it would have been a great area for a live stream. But sadly, that's beyond my technical capabilities. And well, time as well. Whoa! Otherwise, I would have just recorded that this on. Recorded this and just cut out highlights from the stream later to count as an episode. But no, nope, no time for that. Maybe with some other king, maybe some other time. Maybe when I have the software for that. Oh, hello. I see you. I'm gonna take your stuff. You heard me. I'm gonna cut your crutch off. Cut the crutch. Oh! And now the farmer attack. Ooh, this delivered something up. Okay, raise the shield, raise the shield. Get up, get up. A real, get. A real, get up. A real. A real is a drunk. Or he can't get it up. One of the two. It meaning himself. Who's there? Okay, so going to fight the farmer first. Die, you scum! Teach you. you could say many things, but I'm not going to say them. Right. Yeah, this place has crimson nun roots. I think that's what they're called. Big special artifacts and stuff. And. I'm okay with the dark, but I've spent. But this is a un unique game. It's such a fascinating no. design. Right, I forgot to give you the arrows, didn't I? Anything good? Yeah, arrows. I told you I would give you the arrows, but then I forgot. Why do I still have the Ebony Warhammer? And did, we did I seriously forget to sell the weapons? Well, that trip was a waste, then, I guess. 
Because these are the items that really, really are the ones that weigh me down. All right, let's see what you have. Which is why I should give them more to you. Here. Keep carrying these. Sorry for the inconvenience of actually removing them from you once. Okay, moving on. This this place shouldn't be very heavy on the loot. I heard you lightning. Who makes lightning? Hmm? Apparently no one makes lightning. Okay, let's uh, explore this on foot. With my torch lit. Uh, this area appears to be... It has a shield rain. I should get one of those conjure pickaxe spells. Those sound totally badass. And useful. Also, if I'm just spinning around, it's probably because I... Oh. Oh hey, I thought I would kill you by smashing the cocoon. Like this. No, you're still alive. Why are you still alive? You should be dead by now. Come on. That's unfair. Then I just kick you to death. Smash the insect as if it was an insect. Good job, Ariel. I hear more. Could be just that the things make sound always, or there could be more. This is a spiffy light, I want one in my house. It is a spiffy light, and I need it. And when I mean my house, I don't mean my house in Skyrim, I mean my house. My own. Well, my own, if I actually get one my my own, that would be spiffy. Four quarters! These walls were very contained, as they were in their own quarters. It kind of made cleaning up a lot easier. Chest! Your stuff. This door. And a bed. Ooh, I could rest here. Get some of that sweet uh, well rested bonus. Oh, hello, Sarana. I kind of thought she would that was an enemy. But she was not my enemy. Which means we can move on. Greater fortunes. And um, maybe loot. Was that one chest really all the loot in, this, in these quarters? Check the map. Uh, sounds legit. Sounds, looks to be the case. So yeah. I really need to decide on which course of action to take when it comes to exploring this place. Because it's huge. Huge. Kind of want to check here. Can you hear that? Hmm. Get some of that sweet lighting. Get a torch. Is there another insect? Yeah. Quite an obvious location even. Yeah, I don't like these insects. Get back to the torch. While stumbling around in the dark, that's smart. Real smart. I should think before I act, but... Oh, what, 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 what did you say? Chest, on the wall. There's a chest on the wall. That doesn't at all sound practical. I guess they are 
not wasting space. Oh, they just don't use cupboards. Save. Gentlemen, we had some business to discuss, you and I. Blade is an action RPG this time. And then the bastard just flips around. Like that. Come on! Die! Yes! Crotch that! And the blade in the knee. Yeah! Let's see, what do we have? Uh, nothing that made the initial death worth it. Okay, so I think I'll go counterclockwise, not clockwise. Then I should conquer the middle fort. Is there anything specific I'm looking for? I don't think there is. Uh, hey, what's this construction? This takes me to Skyrim. Hmm. I'm tempted to mark the location on my map, but I will. I will do that. That sounds smart. <laughs> but that is all this is about. I would say the great lift at aft hand. I am an explorer now. Let's go back. Radio? Oh, 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 oh. Radio. Uh, uh, oh. oh, hello. I don't like you, dude. Dude, die. Die, dude. 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 To die. Die, dude. To die. I squish you like a bug. <laughs> I didn't expect him to actually squish him like a bug. Yeah, but oh hey, that works. Oh, there's another one, isn't there? Oh hey, actually we hadn't formed up to become one of these big guys. I like that. Right, this was a building I wanted to check before I noticed all those red marks on my map. Cinderian's Field Laboratory. Wait, Cinderian? Wasn't that that guy from Skingrad? Uh, that's completely likely thinking, thinking that this guy still dabbles in all that. Uh, well, still dabbled. He's dead now. Oh. Grabbing this copy of this thing and the soul gems. Yeah, I was about to say that this guy is still dabbled. Oh, leather boots falling. Still dabbled in the Nernroot research. He found the crimson Nernroots now. Orcish short bow of ice. Ice, ice, baby. Radio. Another chest here. But he met his demise. That's gonna be seen. Centurion's Field Journal. For their 58 year, sec second seed, Midas. I spent a large portion of my life unraveling the mystery of the Nern Root, and yet I still feel unfulfilled. The thrilling sound this strange herb emits seems to taunt me. To push me even harder to discover its secrets. Even after a generous and indomitable traveler became a field collector in my stead and provided me with five score of the Nern route, I was only able to master what I consider a med mediocre alchemical creation at best. This only served to strengthen my hunger and whet my appetite for the solution. It wasn't until over 50 years later that the answer to my prayers was carried into my basement workshop at the Westfield Inn. The first thing I heard was the familiar tone, that unmistakable, mistakable, warbly unique to the Nernroot. 
But when I turned around, my heart leapt and a chill ran down my spine. This was indeed a known route, but of a variety the likes of which I have never seen. Well, I hadn't never seen, hadn't ever seen because he saw it there. Right, uh, the herb was a wash in a spectacular array of red hues, each leaf seemingly emblazoned with innumerable variations of crimson. I wouldn't, I couldn't move. I was completely transfixed. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined a species of nerve root with such a, a unique property. After an awkward silence, I finally managed to stammer out a few questions to the traveller who had brought me this treasure. He told me his name was Obef Arnishan, a treasure she seeker from Skyrim. Apparently he'd been exploring a vast subterranean network of grand caverns called Blackridge and had stumbled across what he dismissed as a noisy red weed. His expedition was largely unsuccessful and he didn't want to leave the caves empty handed, so Obef picked one of the Grimson Nerd to bring home. He said that it took some time but eventually he was pointed my way and that perhaps I'd pay a fair price for it. Before I could gather my wits and ask anything else, Obef offered to sell me the Crimson Nerd sample a map showing me how to find Blackridge and the strange key needed to breach its outer defenses. It took me mere moments to decide, Obef left Skingrad a thousand septims richer, but I would have easily paid ten times that amount to obtain the sample alone. It took a year of planning, but I was able to pack up and sell my workshop and make my way into Skyrim. Before delving headfirst into Blackridge, I knew I needed to set up a new, set up a new laboratory but wish to do so in seclusion. After making inquiries at the College of Winterhold, of which I was an honorary member, I was directed to speak to Avrusa Sarefi, a student of botanical alchemy who had a small farm near the city of Riften. Reporting my knowledge of Nurnroot cultivation, I was able to secure Sarefi farm as a launching point for my field research. I kept the knowledge of the Grimson Nurnroot a secret from Avrusa, but imparted everything else I knew to her in exchange for her hospi hospitality. How do I mix words up like that? Few months passed, but I was finally ready to enter Blackridge. I used the ruined lexicon that Obef had provided and descended into the depths. My goal was to gather enough Grimson Nurnroot to produce my greatest alchemical creation to date. I was certain it would take at least 30 of them to provide the necessary catalyst. This brings me to the present. My initial research seems to indicate that the Crimson Nerve has a similar affinity for moisture as the garden variety, but also maintains some sort of symbiotic relationship with that enormous fungi that inhabits Blackridge. It's my guess that the fungi itself is a source of water absorbing it from the moist subterranean air like a sponge. This provides the ideal environment for the Nerve to grow. Unfortunately, the Crimson Nerve Root appears to have a vastly shorter lifespan and they are in no way plentiful down here. Gathering 30 of them will be quite the challenge. But hopefully the denizens of Blackridge will allow me to gather my samples unhindered. Wait, was that really the last page or is there something more? It's perfectly plausible that there's more. Uh, let's make sure. Yep. That's all. That's everything. Oh, a knapsack. With gold. And potions and ring and jewelry. Uh, that's, wait, that was bone meal. I thought it was some sort of other thing. Ah. Yeah, damage stamina learned. Great. Moon sugar, okay. I can work, work with moon sugar. Okay, okay then. Oh, another data hunt. Taking that. And this concludes my investigation here. I'm not going to do that rooty thingy. My character is not an alchemist, he doesn't need that. But what I will do is end the episode here because I don't want these episodes to stretch out too long. Despite the fact that this means more episodes in Blackridge, oh joy. Thank you for watching and see you next time.